join the join. Time to breathe the second installment of your emergency survival guide. Day one. In this installment, I'm going to talk about that promised monster fight to show you. Eventually, after I spend the first few chapters boring you with more explanation about an interface stuff. Now in the previous trials you already saw me use a few things, such as the entity list. This pretty much is well a list of entities. It holds all of the different tools and classes and entities the engine has, such as, you know, weapons, items, tools, you know, and other stuff like that. I'm going to experiment with these until I make a story about each one of them. The entity list holds properties about what you've currently selected. Now another one, another tool panel you are going to need, but coding for that for some reason it shouldn't be displayed by default, is the from view tools, also shortcut Q. And I'm going to pretty much dedicate this tutorial to in secretly teach you how to use most of these options. The very basic ones are just location information for your stuff, such as if I insert a simple model, such as the coordinates of the of, the, of your selection, x, y, and z, the rotation, as you can see it will change, the stretching, and other stuff. I'm going to eventually explain them. That, that's pretty much for the two panels. Don't bother with all of these. I'm going to explain most of these in other tutorials. Okay, the other thing I should have mentioned are the rendering mode commands. Now these are accessed via your gnome pad. And the most important ones are gnome pad 1. This is quarter view mode. Top down view, sideways, front back. These are useful for when making models or aligning stuff. Gnome pad 9. This is full screen view, but with editor models enabled. And gnome pad 6 means full game mode render. This enables shadows, reflections, specularity, and other stuff like that. And this is pretty much how your level is going to look like when being played in game. Now the performance settings are accessible if you go to playtest mode D and then hit F10 to enter your game menu settings. I can't really display that because F10 also happens to be my stop recording button. Now the numpad keys are actually customizable. So for example if you don't want numpad 6 to be full game render mode you can customize that to make it something else. For example render your level without shadows. I'm going to make a separate show to you on how to do that and upload this after this one. Okay, glad that's over with. Now we can move on to that monster fight tutorial, I promised you guys. Let me just adjust a few things here. You can move these around by holding your mouse cursor at the border and jogging. I want to give you guys more view space. There we go. Now, anything in Sirius Engine that walks on legs is naturally called a legged tractor. And these are pretty much all the enemies in Sega Sam. Three, except for the Knum puppet. The Kholum, or how you pronounce that anyway. Except that thing. That has its own puppet tractor, but for now, since we're not adding anything that big, I'm going to go with the legged tractor and add a simple rocketeer. Now the tractors, anything in Sam is defined by Puppet parameters? In summary, this is the model of the tractor, what projectiles it fires, his, its health, and other parameters like that. It actually gets quite advanced, so don't bother with doing your custom tractors right now. And also, defined by the tractor behavior, and this means how the thing is going to react to virus environment stimulation. For example, it will chase the player, run away from the player, try to help you, Kill everyone and stuff like that. Let's start by adding a simple Rocketeer, because they're my favorite enemy. They are found in CSM content, CSM free, databases, um, puppets, enemies, and they're located in. Well, Rocketman. There we go. What the fuck? 
Oh, right, I'm back. I forgot that I had the Seagulls Fantasy Space Marine Space Mode installed that replaced all the things with Space Marine like stuff. I don't know. Anyhow, let's continue. Like the what? Are the, yes. Now we need to add a character behavior. Which is done again, bros. And it's found in content, Sega Sun free databases, behaviors, enemies. And let's find the Rocket Man. And now, if we playtest this, you will see that it works. Yay, my jersey is now cast by islands! Alright, now that we know that that works, let's continue making our army of these guys. There are several ways to do that. We can use the miscellaneous tools by nose, and use the clone tool to create a line of them. And if you notice, your tools by nose has now transformed into the clone entities tool. And this is why it's very important to have this open. And why I don't get why Crow Team doesn't have this enabled by default. One of the options is offset mode. The offset pretty much controls the well added offset value to the location of every entity. And I can control this. Dragging my left mouse button on the arrows allows me to adjust the value by dragging my mouse. And I can make them go into line. And control their number. If I want it more. I can also the scale doesn't work when using puppets or any other entity that has its scale hard coded. Or not hard coded, but not just not available normally. This the scale will work with when cloning model files though. You also have your rotation, but the rotation works around the center of the world. So if I put my original value here, I can rotate these around the center of the map by inputting a value. It's just, and this just adds a rotation value to all of the entities aligned in the center of the map. Now there is another tool we can use and this one is more useful for creating arrays of stuff and it's naturally called array rectangular. Shortcut for these is actually written on the side. For the cloning it's Control shift plus O, and it's not really very comfortable for me to use. And the R I rectangular, shift and shift out and it actually says it when you highlight it. Shift out and left bracket. Again, not sure what coding was thinking with that. And how the R I rectangular tool is actually very useful, as it allows me to create a small log box. I can control the value of each with which of each side of the box I want to create the clones of. For example, I, I could have 10 clones on the x-axis and 20 on the z-axis. Although this is a bit too much for the for my computer to handle while recording, so let's take only 4 and 8 like I had it previously set to. You can control the offset not really, like from like the clone tool and it's applied to the each clone on each row so I can in, ex, increase the distance between each one or I can increase the distance like this if I want to try I can make a small box of these <laughs> and then this would apply to the Y offset Alright, yet another tool you can use. Yes, there are more. And, and of course, and hopefully this will be the last one. I'm going to go through explaining. The last tool is the natural state of the tools panel, which allows you in a way a sort of cloning mode. Let's create a few random clones by simply using control and paste. How many of these? Ten of them. And if you notice, no, normally if I drag these values, the offset of the location applies to the whole selection as if it was a single element with a 
center median point somewhere in he around here. And the same applies to rotation. But there is a, there is a thing called the element node. So I can just undo this, the rotation. There you go. The element mode. And what this does is apply the new the set values here to every element without as if it was selected on its own. Now what this means is if I input a value such as 4, it's going to apply that change to every entity that's selected instead of moving the whole selection to that well the input value. So if I'm to demonstrate that, let's 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 undo the element of set. And if I input five now, you're going to see that the selection is moved there, but the relevant offset of each selected entity is remained in element mode. If I input five and five again, all the entities are placed there. This is useful for when creating a sort of handmade array. To continue our array, we can use the offset mode. And what that this does is pretty much it adds or subtracts any value we input here. So for example, if you notice my that these guys are like at 20 Z and 4 X, if I use L offset mode and input 5 and well 4 and 2, it adds that value to their location. And this is useful because for example if I have some arbitrary numbers such as 27.642 and some other thing and I don't want to manually add my number to it, I can use offset mode and just add 12 to it. And it automatically becomes 49. Or I can use a small value. And it will become 49 and 92. And if I input a negative number, it's going to subtract it. Well, where they go? There they go. Wait, I got confused. Shift or control plus D. Control plus D. Isn't this just amusing to watch? <laughs> there are several things you can do while in playtest mode without player. For example, the SE activates your.